I think for any chef who really gives it their all, it's like, do I want to identify my, my whole life as a chef? Like, is this who I am or is this what I do? And for here, I don't think that that's ever been a question for me. If you need to thin it out with a little bit of olive oil or- That's still not enough. Grab that parm and get over here. So it's just gonna be like, do nothing, do nothing, do nothing. Go, 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 go. I just have, I have a voice in the back of my head sometimes that says I'm not good enough. They're not, I'm not supposed to be here. When not riding his Ducati through Long Island's burgeoning wine country or finding peace in a local yoga studio, Stefan Bogardis is the executive chef at North Fork Table and Inn. And at 31, this soft-spoken chef and proponent of the farm-to-table movement has found himself back in his hometown and taking on a role he never expected. It doesn't matter if I'm supposed to be. What matters is that I'm here. We're gonna wait for everything to be cleared and then we'll run out 100, 101. The universe puts us where we need to be. And a lot of the times you just need to be open enough and receptive enough to the energies out there to accept it. Travel to the North Fork, the heart of Long Island's agricultural bounty, and you'll likely spot a classic New England mansion as you head east along Main Road. This is the sprawling home to the North Fork Table and Inn, a nationally recognized restaurant that opened in 2006 to rave reviews, long before Stefan Bogardis took over the helm. Jerry Hayden was a chef. He came out to the North Fork of Long Island after a long, prosperous life in New York City. He owned this restaurant, he built this restaurant. He created the team that's now executing his dream. Raised in Setauket and trained in some of New York City's best kitchens, Jerry Hayden returned to become a culinary giant on Long Island. With his culinary partner and pastry chef Claudia Fleming, the duo raised the bar on East End Dining. If I was trying to compare myself to him, I probably would have failed. Stefan came to us just out of culinary school and he was a young buck. He was exuberant and confident and fast and passionate and a very young man. Gnocchi is one of those things where it really highlights the skill and technician of the chef. Stefan joined the kitchen three days out of culinary school as a prep cook. Armed with his resume and a set of knives, he knocked on the back door, asking for mentorship. You really, 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 really want to avoid having physical contact with the dough because it will develop gluten strands. Me, as an older woman, I'm, I'm a little more chill than that. I would say to Jerry, if you don't tell him to slow down, I'm gonna stick my foot out and he's gonna go flying. <laughs> I've, never, I've never cooked 40 gnocchis on the new. Not at like this level, like you could do it at a like banquet hall, getting pre-packaged stuff. If they stay too long in the water, they're gonna be done. That was my relationship with Stefan for a long time. I was frustrated by him and Jerry adored him. And Jerry would be like, I love that kid. He reminds me of me. I just love that kid. Do you know how talented he is? He is so awesome. And I'd be like, okay, whatever. Could you tell him to slow down? There's different top down low. That's awesome. Did you get that on slow-mo? For a long time as a cook, I thought that I had to work 90 hours a week plus, and that was how I was gonna be great. And I held myself this horrible, unrealistic expectation, and then I held everyone else around me that same expectation. It was horrible and I got burnt out, and that's not the right structure for it. Grab me the mop. It's not like we just painted or anything. I'm sure you've had worse things happen. That's, that's up there on TV, right? it's funny. Like what would 30 year old you say to 20 year old you? We don't have enough time for that. <laughs> <laughs> we all, everything happens for a reason, right? I'm, I'm that guy. I'm born and raised on the North Fork, right? Like I lived here my whole entire life. You do too much of anything and you're like, man, I gotta see what else is out there. And then you go out there and they're like, man, where I was was so special. I did that three times with this place. 
The North Fork Table and Inn was the beginning of an education that has come to define Bogardus' cooking. For Jerry Hayden, Stefan would come to be the kindred spirit he needed, as the two formed a relationship that has shaped both of their lives. I'll never forget my first night when I was here. I was watching him plate a duck breast. I looked at him and I was like, does it ever get old? And he looked at me and he goes, I'm gonna die on a line. And I think that that was like the testament to what made him such a special individual. So all he ever really wanted to do was cook great food for people that appreciated it. It's very important for me to know exactly where all the products that I use come from. Jerry loved cooking more than anything in the whole world. He lived and breathed it. We were going at a great clip. Things were, were great. Business was great. And reviews were great. Jerry started having some weakness in his hands and um, in his legs and just started feeling a little weird. So we went and saw this doctor in New York and he confirmed that it was in fact ALS. When you are your hands, that's how he portrayed himself to the world. It's how he felt about who he was. It was devastating. I have doubt since the age of 15 that I wanted to cook. I started as a dishwasher. A chef de cuisine while Jerry was sick. I was his hands, his beautiful mind. We helped execute some beautiful stuff. He became Jerry's hands, and that was a beautiful thing. So he turned all the passions that he had for cooking and for the restaurant industry into raising money to try to combat ALS. Incorporate that love of food into the love that I have for people who are going to be diagnosed with this disease, people who are diagnosed with this disease. He was amazing. Um, Strong leader, intelligent businessman, brilliant mentor. He's the reason that I am where I am. What's going on? Good to see you, sir. You too. Thank you so much for being here. It's going to be an awesome night. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Thank you so much. Your first course is going to be razor clams that are poached in hazelnut oil that's flavored with black cardamom and vanilla. With the first greens of spring, which I think really mark the beginning of the new season, from Mr. Ira Haspel, who runs the farm down the road, and we made some fresh gnocchi that we got out of some local potatoes. Uh, some dear friends of the restaurant who are pretty regular, and he's like, I haven't been to a restaurant like this ever in my life, and it was so good. He got the fish stew, and he was like, it was like I was sitting on a dock of the bay. And I was like, funny story about that. Well, we, we cooked the fish in the water from the bay. I was like, it makes sense, right? And he's like, yeah, but people don't think like that. He has begun to develop his own very distinct style, different from Jerry's, but one that is in keeping with who the North Fork Table and Inn is. You know the most important part of service? Getting your mise en place together? Getting all your ducks in a row. Our joke is your mise can't be all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought you were rolling. Oh, yeah. oh sorry. <laughs> Crap. <laughs> chef joke. Like Conversation. Conversation. Top Chef made it one of these household terms and like people started making fun of it, but to a chef, it's it's everything. It really is a way of life because without your mise en place and having everything that you need within reach, it, that's how you go down the path of not being prepared, not being ready. And it's not just a physical thing, it's also mental mise en place. Wait, wait, wait. Mental mise en place? I think it's all about getting your mind right and it's making sure that you're able to, to kind of take care of your life so that you feel good on the inside. Your mind is right, prepared, and you're in the zone so that you could give this everything that you got. What does mental mise en place look like? A relaxed, calm mind. It's ready to cook. So once I start to get that feeling of like, oh, am I doing the right thing? Am I good enough to be doing this? Should, should I put this on that plate? Should I take this off that plate? I just try to step back, do some breathing exercises, maybe a little bit of stretching. It's really important to slow down a little bit. 
The kitchen's chaotic breath and meditation. That's the root of yoga. It's not about putting your foot behind your head or doing a handstand or sweating in a hot class. It's about connecting breath to movement. When you're acknowledging your breath, it's meditation. I make a joke and say, I don't always tell people where I hunt, but when I do, I'm always lying. Because <laughs> it's like, a gen it's like the, the secret fishing spot where part of being respectful to the owner and to the property is not by drawing attention. Stefan grounds himself with hobbies. It's his way of soul searching and introspection that helps hone his success. The only question left is what will become of his own legacy. The idea of greatness is a perception of myself. And the way that I nurture that is by my hobbies, bringing forth that sense of introspection, like yoga, riding motorcycles, even hunting and fishing. The idea of sitting in a tree stand alone for three hours, not moving like this with a bow, and then having everything line up perfectly. Maybe you get a shot. Thank you all so much for coming. Does anyone have any questions about the food? How do we make it? <laughs> it's easy, lots of love. Stefan was here for a while after Jerry was sick and then left to follow a girl. So we had a series of chefs here after Stefan. None of them worked out very well. And when Jerry passed, I knew I had to have Stefan here. So I called him and asked him to come home. Oyster, duck, duck, garnish, duck in the oven. Jerry wanted to try to replicate the idea of a Michelin star in, in an emerging segment of Long Island that really wasn't quite at its potential yet. He saw something here that other people didn't. This is his inspiration. And I hope we do him proud by trying to continue on. Fast forward, he created a culture on the North Fork to be able to do that. Now I'm the person that gets to do it. It was very challenging for him to step into Jerry's shoes. And he never pretended for a second that he was doing that. I have to say, nobody keeps Jerry's spirit alive in the way that Stefan does. And I am so grateful that he's here. I'm always going to cook. It's the only thing I know how to do really well. I, well, it's, it, whatever. It, that sounds like such cliche bullshit. But it's so true. I think for any chef who really gives it their all, it's like, do I want to identify my, my whole life as a chef? Do I want to be identify, like, is this who I am? Or is this what I do? And for here, I don't think that that's ever been a question for me. Like, I think that has, it has been a great tool for self-exploration. And I feel like I've grown with the business and the business has grown with me. A lot of times I, I just feel like it's the right place at the right time. It's like a wave if you're surfing. You could sit outside on a board all day, but if you don't have the right season, the right wind, you're never gonna stand up and you can't force it. It just has to happen. And that's what I feel about the North Fork table.